So we start. It is a pleasure to have with us today Jairo Mendes Abreu. Some of you that work in Galaxy Dynamics uh, have uh, got uh, uh, his uh, papers. You have read, you know that. For those who are outside of the field, let me say a few words. Uh, Jairo is at the University of La Laguna, the Instituto de Astrofisica de Canarias. Uh, he's uh, working uh, on the evolution uh, of uh, galaxies, and he has uh, very nice data uh, that refer to early uh, universe galaxies, but also at the local universe. And uh, uh, we that are doing uh, building theories, we need this work to build our models on them and to test uh, our results. So just let me mention that uh, Jairo has uh, spent time at St. Andrews and the University of Granada before he's uh, returning to uh, the Institute of Astrophysics de Canarias. Uh, the evolution of bulges, bars, and disks <laughs> is uh, in his uh, research field. So I'm sure that uh, you will be interested in listening to his talk. Cairo, you may start. The microphone is uh, open here. So if some people want uh, something to be clarified, it will be interrupted, else the uh, questions will be at the end of the talk. So we thank you very much for accepting the invitation and we are looking forward to listening to your talk. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to all for having me today um, and especially Panos for, for the invitation. And well, as Panos say, if you have any question or comments during the talk, you please do not do not hesitate to to stop me, and we can we can discuss it during the talk or uh, at the end, as you prefer. So uh, yes, so today uh, my plan is uh, to talk to you about uh, my recent works on on the evolution of uh, bar galaxies with the uh, data coming from the James Webb Space Telescope. As you know, uh, bars. Uh, sorry, no, it's not. Uh, it's not. It's not changing slides. Uh, we tried this before. Ah, okay, no, uh, no. Okay. <laughs> so, as you know, um, can you see the change of slides? Right. Yes. Yes. Okay, so as you know, bars are uh, these elongated structures that we see in most of local galaxies, local spiral galaxies in, in the universe. And they are important for us, not only because they look uh, beautiful when we look at these color images of, of galaxies, but because they have um, an important role on the evolution of galaxies. So as an example, uh, we think that bars are uh, the most important internal factor redistributing baryonic and dramatic angular momentum. In fact, this is the way that bars grow with time uh, inside the, these galaxies. And of course, this have an, an impact on changing the morphology of galaxies. Uh, we know also that uh, bars uh, can drive efficiently uh, gas from the outer disk to the central region of, of galaxies. And this can uh, make up uh, eventually new uh, bulges, what we call these like bulges at the center of, uh, of galaxies. And also uh, some of these bars, especially nuclear bars, can also uh, uh, move gas uh, into the very inner regions, into the uh, central black hole, feeding the, the central black hole. Um, Another important aspect on, on, on bars is uh, the effect on, on the radial migration of the stars. So the movement of the stars from their birthplace due to mainly resonances and, and co-rotation in galaxies. And this also produced that there is a, a change in the chemical evolution uh, of the galaxies due to this uh, movement of the stars in, in a radial direction. Uh, what do we know about bar formation? So uh, for numerical simulation, in particular uh, from M-body simulations, like this one that I'm showing, showing you here, we know that bars form spontaneously due to instabilities in dynamically cold disk. And there has been ample evidence 
For this here, I'll show you just some of uh, the large amount of paper that have been published on, on this issue. And uh, the problem then comes from uh, why do we have uh, some galaxies that look very similar, like this view, for instance, that I have, uh, I'm, I'm showing you here. Uh, one of them, like M101, is a fluculent uh, spiral galaxy without a bar. But in the other, uh, we have a strong bar in the belly center. So why some galaxies develop a bar and some others uh, doesn't? So this is one of the of the problems that we have now. And uh, during the years, we have been looking for different uh, drivers for this formation of galaxies, different factors that uh, might drive the formation of, of bars. Uh, here I show you some examples. This is from a work of uh, Leah Tanasula in 2013, in which uh, she was um, trying to look at, at different internal factors for the evolution of bars. Here in particular is the, bar, the, the gas fraction in a galaxy as a function of the halo shape. And you can see how uh, she found a very strong uh, dependence on the gas fraction. When you move from lower gas fraction, you have um, a very strong bar forming in, in your disk. And when you move to higher gas fraction, these bars uh, this bar become less strong. And there is some uh, trend also with the halo shape. So apparently these uh, are two uh, important uh, internal factors for the evolution of bars. And this was supported by uh, some uh, observations. Here I show you uh, this plot. It's taken from the paper by Peter Irwin in 2018 in which uh, uh, works based on imaging from, uh, from the SLOAD Digital Sky Survey, they show how uh, there was this uh, evolution, uh, this, this uh, difference in the bar fraction with uh, a higher um, H1 uh, to uh, stellar mass fraction. However, in, in this particular paper, uh, Peter Irwin showed that uh, using a better defined sample, uh, using the S4G sample of galaxies, uh, so looking at galaxies in the infrared and with a better coverage on the uh, uh, atomic uh, gas uh, fraction, there is uh, the reason such a correlation with the gas fraction. So apparently these previous work were biased uh, somehow, and uh, bar formation, it doesn't seem to be dependent on the gas fraction. Uh, what relates to the halo shape is more difficult. We have not uh, a good way to measure the halo shape for individual galaxies. So this is still something that remains to be uh, confirmed or refuted by, by observations. But what do we know is that uh, an, an important internal factor that drives the formation of bars is uh, the stellar mass of the galaxies. So here I show you what is the bar fraction as a function of the stellar mass. This is from a paper that we did in 2012. This is a sample of galaxies taken for the field. This is using the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. Here uh, you can see the number of galaxies in each beam, and you can see how there is a strong dependence on the stellar mass for the gas for the for the bar fraction. So for galaxies that are in the dwarf regime, the bar fraction decrease. Um, very uh, very rapidly. Uh, there is a peak on the maximum of the bar fraction, which is around um, uh, nine to the to the ten uh, ten times nine to the three. And uh, what is also uh, interesting is that this uh, peak on the bar fraction corresponds roughly to the minimum thickness of the disks in the local universe. This is a paper that we did with uh, Ruben Sanchez Janssen in the same year. Uh, in this plot, what is shown is the apparent uh, axis ratio of a, sandom, of, a, of a sample of randomly selected galaxies as a function of stellar mass. So this uh, lower boundary here define the, uh, the minimum thickness of the disk which is uh, uh, in the shape of, a, of an U, more or less, with a minimum at roughly the same uh, stellar mass that we saw the maximum peak uh, of the bar fraction in the local universe. 
This has been also been confirmed in the more recent papers by, by Peter Ewing uh, using uh, this sample from the S4G. Here, the red points are the, the sample from, from, from Peter. Here, this is our work uh, from 2012, which uh, showed the same uh, trend with a little less bar fraction. We are uh, selecting or classifying bars in, in an optical wave band while Peter is doing this in the in the inference. So the, he has a, a larger bar fraction, but the dependence with the with the stellar mass it seems to be clear, and it seems to be the main internal factor uh, driving this uh, galaxy bar, bar formation. Uh, however, there are also external uh, effects that can uh, produce, that can uh, trigger the formation of bars, and in particular, what we call induced bars. Uh, this is a, an example of an induced bar in a numerical simulation performed by Ima Martinez Valpuesta in 2017, but there are also a lot of um, works on, on this kind of uh, bar formation. And uh, one of the conclusions uh, from this work is that uh, bars can be also induced uh, by uh, chance interaction, by flybys mainly, and uh, that the properties of these bars uh, that are formed in this way may be different from the properties of bars from form in a spontaneous way. Uh, the, the study of how uh, different environments can uh, influence the formation of, uh, of a bar has been also highly debated, debated uh, during the years. Uh, there, there are some papers uh, claiming that uh, yes, the environment affects bars. Some others saying that no, the environment does not affect the bars. And many of them use different methods for uh, defining what the environment is. So some of, uh, of this method is uh, galaxies belonging to, to a cluster of galaxies or to groups. Some other use uh, cross correlations, two point cross correlation or nearest neighbor methods to uh, study uh, the environment. And in, in a paper in 2012, uh, what we uh, saw is that uh, when you look at the bar fraction, again, as a function of the stellar mass, for galaxies in the field, this is the same uh, histogram that I showed before, and you compare it with sample of uh, galaxies selected from uh, the nearby clusters Virgo and Coma, which are the two, um, let's say, uh, well-known clusters in the, in, the local, in the local universe, you can see how the maximum peak of the bar fraction uh, change from those uh, galaxies in the field which peaks at around 9.3 9 uh, in, in logarithm stellar mass, while uh, galaxies in the bars form in, in a high density environment like uh, Virgo or Coma, they show uh, this peak at about one order of magnitude uh, higher in mass. So the bar fraction also occur uh, uh, in a mass dependent way for cluster, but they peak at a different at a different mass. So from this uh, initial introduction to the bar fractions at low redshift, we know that uh, there is a main dependence uh, of the bar fraction with the galaxy mass. Uh, we also know that there is a secondary dependence uh, on the environment that uh, we also need to take into account when we are comparing different samples in order to estimate the bar fraction. And we also know that it's important to keep uh, observational effects under control. And these observational effects are mainly the spatial resolution of our images. This is key if we want to resolve bars in our images and also the image depth. And this is something that I will go into more detail now uh, when we will explain uh, our uh, results uh, using the James Webb Space Telescope. So uh, let's now move to the bar evolution this redshift. And uh, in particular, what do we know now when uh, we are using the James Webb to explore high redshift galaxies? And this uh, has been a change of paradigm in, in, many, in, in many places. Uh, James Webb has changed our way 
that we think um, high redshift galaxies form. Here, I show you just uh, some examples. This is a plot of the stellar mass as a function of the redshift showing how we are now detecting very massive uh, galaxies at very early stage in the, in the universe. So they are telling us that the efficiency of the star formation in, in this galaxy was very high and higher than and previously observed. And also related to the morphology, which is what uh, I'm more interested in, like uh, this, this plot here, when the uh, fraction of different uh, morphological types, uh, galaxies with disk, spheroids, or with irregular features, uh, evolve with redshift. And here, you can see how now we are exploring a very high redshift, so from redshift 3 to redshift 7, and how this fraction of disk is very high uh, and comparable to the to the fraction of spheroid, even at high redshift, high redshift uh, five or or even larger. So this has changed um, our view for the formation of disk. Before we saw that the uh, in the early universe most of the galaxies were uh, irregular galaxies, and the formation of this was uh, happening or mature disk uh, were happening later in time. But now James Webb is changing this, this view on, on galaxy formation. So this led us to explore uh, the bar population uh, in one of the clusters that was observed uh, in the very uh, first observations uh, of the James Webb. And uh, this is the SMAX uh, 73 galaxy cluster. This observation, as I, I told you before, were early release observations taken uh, with the NIRCAN image, uh, image camera in uh, seven different filters. Uh, and two main points uh, related to these images are, are important. The first one is that they were very deep. Uh, so we can go really to the regions of low surface brightness in, in our galaxies, the regions where the disks dominate. So we can see disks um, uh, very well defined and on, on, this, on, on these images. And the second, of course, is the uh, spatial resolution uh, provided by the Nirkan camera, which at the redshift of this cluster of SMAX 73, which is at redshift 0.4, is about uh, three, 370 parsec uh, uh, full width. Uh, the first thing that we did was, of course, to select uh, cluster members. Uh, this was done using a combination of um, the color magnitude diagram that I show here and two particular filters uh, that we define as the best defining the red sequence of the cluster, and also using all the spectroscopy that was available at the time, which are the dots that are shown here in green and in blue. So the spectroscopy confirmed that this is the red sequence of our cluster. So we just put some upper and, and lower limits on the color that the galaxy might have at this redshift. Uh, we impose also a limit on the brightest cluster galaxy, defining the, the, the brightest galaxy that uh, could be part of this, uh, of this cluster, and also a lower limit to avoid uh, entry into the confusion region of, uh, of, uh, low, mass, of low mass galaxies. With this, oh, sorry, with this we selected a sample of 188 galaxies that uh, we think are bona fide member, uh, member clusters. And um, one of the of the questions that uh, we did to ourselves was, uh, okay, so before uh, doing all this uh, all this work, we need to to, to really um, see if we are doing better than was uh, previously done with the with the HST. And this is one of the figures that we made to demonstrate this, in which we show here uh, a sample of what we call uh, secure bars. Uh, from lower mass to higher mass, uncertain bars, so bars that uh, some of us uh, classify as bar galaxies, but some others uh, do not, and galaxies in which we all agree that there is no bar. And you can see how the difference between James Webb 
and uh, HSD is very clear. In some cases, you don't see, you don't have the definition to see the, the bar inside. In other cases, what you don't have is the depth to go and see the disk and they're going here in the galaxy that you can see here in the uh, James Webb batch very, very, very clear. So this motivates us to continue doing, doing this work and to perform the visual classification of all these galaxies. We classify galaxies into ellipticals, disks, and of course, uh, barred, uh, barred disk to perform the, uh, the, the study of the bar fraction as a function of the galaxy stellar mass. And these are uh, our results on, on, this, on this topic. So here again, bar fraction as a function of the stellar mass. Here in violet, you see the results from this cluster at redshift point 0.4. This is SMAX 73 that we plot together with the previous results uh, on uh, local clusters like Common Virgo that we did in 2012. So you can see how more or less the, the trend is the same for the three clusters. So uh, this new work confirmed this tendency of clusters to uh, have a peak at higher masses. But if we go a bit into the details and we explore the different uh, regions in the stellar mass, what we can see is that in the lower mass regime, uh, there is this strong decline that we saw also for local cluster, and this is shared also by the SMAX cluster at higher redshift. At intermediate masses, uh, we see a secondary peak here in the Virgo cluster. Um, in 2012, we were not sure about this peak, and uh, we saw that maybe it will be a factor of uh, statistics uh, on, on the number of, of galaxies. But we were a bit um, uh, suspecting that uh, this peak coincides more or less with the maximum fraction of uh, bars when you are looking at a field sample and not a cluster. So we see this kind of double peak that could be associated that Virgo can contain some galaxies, uh, some bars, um, uh, which are or galaxies which are mapping in the in the field, let's say, or sharing some properties of the field. Remember that Virgo is a still a, a, a cluster that is in a, that has a lot of substructure, not like Coma, which is a kind of virialized uh, cluster in the local universe. So that's why we still think that this uh, small peak can be can be real. But then when we move to higher masses we see a slight increase in the bar fraction moving from a SMAX with a lower bar fraction to Virgo and then to Coma. So I will try to, to go later to explain a bit more on, on our interpretation of this data. But uh, apart from comparing uh, this with uh, local clusters, uh, we also compare it with local field galaxies. And this is the comparison of the SMAX cluster here with uh, galaxies in the field. This is the same field that we use in uh, 2012. And you can see how, uh, as expected, because as Max shared this strong decline on the bar fraction with Virgo and Coma, there is this uh, dramatic decrease on the bar fraction uh, for low mass galaxies when you are taught, when you are studying galaxies in the field and studying in galaxies in cluster. However, when we move to the higher mass uh, uh, range of the galaxies, here for SMAX, the bar fraction is more or less similar. It's a bit larger for SMAX than uh, in the field, but uh, within the errors, we can see we can say that the, the bar fraction is, is highly similar when comparing to local samples. So the evolution of the high mass a sample of galaxies, some bar fraction uh, is not too, too drastic compared with the local field. We also compare with galaxies uh, at the same redshift, at redshift 0.4, and we did this using either uh, simulations or observations. Uh, here, you can see this is our uh, previous bar fraction of SMAX as a function of stellar mass. And here, uh, what we plot is 
This is the, the black points represent the sample by Rosas Guevara uh, using uh, the illustrious CNG50 simulations. These points over here represent the sample of Sao et al. 2020 from illustrious CNG100. And these blue points here are the sample from Kapanach uh, 2022 using a sample of bar galaxies from the Eagle simulations. All of them are redshift at, of about 0.4. And the big stars here are the uh, observations uh, uh, used by Melvin uh, and collaborators in and, and 2014 using HST observations uh, of the cosmos field. So you can see how for most of the simulations, uh, simulations provide a much larger bar fraction at uh, higher masses that uh, we, we observe. Uh, this is true for most of them, except for this uh, sample here of uh, Eagle observations. And one of the main difference, apart that uh, this is Eagle and this is Illustris, is that in this paper by Kavanagh, they try to mimic the observational effect of visually classify the galaxies in the sense that they use a machine learning approach to classify galaxies into disk and to classify those disks as bar or non-bar. While the disk classification uh, on, on, on this illustrious sample is done using the uh, angular momentum of the particles in the simulation. So this might be one of the difference in the sense that uh, this simulation might be detecting too many disks and too many bars uh, due to the way they are, they are computing it. And we when we compare with more um, observational, see, observationally similar uh, methodology, the, the decline here is more or less what we expect when we look at, uh, at clusters or, or at galaxies at this, at this ratio. Uh, the difference with observation is also clear. So here you can see how the values of Melvin's are way over and under uh, the values that we are obtaining now using uh, the, the images from the James Webb. And the, the, the reason for this, or at least what, what we think is the reason for this, is the improved depth of the images that we are using now using the James Webb. The spatial resolution is also, uh, is also an issue, and uh, but the difference in, in spatial resolution between the the, the HST images and the James Webb images is not too drastic, at least uh, in a spatial, in, in physical size at, the, at this redshift. But uh, what we think is that the, um, the, the depth of the images, uh, it is, it is the, the important thing here that is making that this sample is not, um, the fraction of bars in the sample by Melvin is, is much lower than, than what we are seeing now in, in with the James Webb. So as conclusion for this uh, first part of the of the talk related to this work on the on the bar fraction and the evolution of the bar fraction in different environments is that uh, galaxy mass seems to be the most important driver of bar formation. Uh, this bar formation also depends on the environment, uh, at least if we consider environment uh, galaxies belonging to a cluster or a massive cluster, like uh, Coma, Virgo, and SMAX uh, 73, and that this dependence uh, with environment is also uh, dependent on, on the mass, so we have a peak on the um, efficiency of bar formation, which is different for clusters than, than uh, in the field. And this mass dependent effect is still uh, is in, in place when we look for cluster at ratio 0 0.4. 0 0.4 is uh, about four or five giga years of evolution. It's still not too far away. So the next step, of course, is to go to further uh, clusters trying to, to unveil if this uh, different evolution also holds for galaxies uh, at the, uh, for clusters of galaxies, which are at an early stage of the uh, assembly. Uh, our explanation for this difference between uh, low mass and high mass uh, formation of bars uh, can be 
summarized uh, in in this way, and this is our our hypothesis: is that uh, for galaxies in the field, the bar formation depends mainly on the fact that you have you need to have a rotationally um, supported disk or uh, a disk in which you have the minimum thickness uh, possible. And this is basically the same when you look at galaxies in the low mass regime or the high mass regime. The, the difference for clusters is that uh, for the low mass galaxies, the processes that are happening in, in the clusters, such as harassment or tidal interactions, can hit uh, the can, can hit the, the disk or can even destroy the disk and remove the outer parts of of, uh, of the stellar of the stellar part of the disk. And these processes can be able um, to uh, inhibit the formation of, of bars. And probably this is the reason the reason why we see this strong decrease on on the bar fraction uh, for the low mass uh, galaxies when you are looking at field and clusters. Uh, on the other hand, for high mass, this is the same effects, this is the same interaction with other galaxies can be um, uh, can, don't, can 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 affect in a different way because disks uh, are massive, they have strong potential, and these interactions can uh, enhance the ability of these galaxies to form bars, as uh, some numerical simulations of induced bars due to flybys have also demonstrated. So this is uh, our interpretation. So uh, in a cluster such as SMACs, which is a higher ratio, probably in an early stage of their uh, formation, these effects are uh, still having a, a, lower, uh, a lower effect, let's say. Uh, but when we move to uh, clusters that are uh, already visualized, like coma, this is far higher, and this is why we think we see this difference in the bar fraction between SMAX, Virgo, and coma for the high mass uh, distribution. Now, let me talk to you a bit uh, about this uh, new uh, bar galaxy that we have discovered. Uh, at Redshift uh, 3, and uh, what, uh, at least uh, to the best of my knowledge, is the, the highest Redshift bar that we have detected uh, so far. Uh, by the way, the, the paper will appear tomorrow. So just for one day, I cannot show you the, the published paper in, in, in Nature. Uh, so uh, the, the bar evolution uh, with Redshift, uh, this is, uh, these are some results uh, that uh, were obtained with HST. It tell us that uh, in, in general, there should be a decrease on the bar fraction as a function of Redshift, right? So these are uh, early results by, uh, by Shed uh, in 2012, but uh, also more recent um, results also show similar trends with uh, higher or lower slope, depending also on the mass cuts uh, or uh, the definition if you have a strong or, or a weak bar. And uh, the work uh, that I'm going to present you now has been done using the uh, Sears survey uh, in the extended growth south field. Uh, this is uh, one of the uh, uh, legacy surveys that uh, has been done and they are still in, in progress with the JWST. Uh, this is a project uh, that has been observed this field for in, in seven bands for several orbits. And again, one of the uh, main um, uh, important things about this field is that uh, they are getting very deep in the observations that they are, they, are, they are getting. So we have, again, deep observations and the high quality spatial resolution provided by the James Webb. So uh, before using this, uh, this uh, survey, uh, GU and collaborators uh, detected uh, some of the uh, higher redshift bars uh, detected so far. And this is a sample of the of six uh, bar galaxies. As you can see here, we are talking now about redshift 1.1 or uh, even redshift 2.1 and 2.3. These were 
to the to that moment the uh, highest redshift uh, bars that were detected uh, in, in in this sample in, in, in the CR survey. And this already started to make us think that um, if bars can be formed at such high redshift, then the disk uh, that should be already mature at this uh, at this redshift to form a bar, they should be formed at higher redshift than, than expected before the, the observation with the James Webb. So what we did is uh, using this, uh, this sample of Sears, we detect this galaxy, which is Sears 2112. Here I show you the image of the, of the galaxy in uh, the seven filters detected by, uh, observed by, by the James Webb. And you can see how there is a clear bar here at the center of, of this galaxy. Even you can see some hints for what will be the, the departure of some spiral arms going out of, of these bars. And uh, on these images, we have performed all the typical um, analysis, quantitative analysis to uh, assess uh, the presence of a bar. Here is a stack imaging uh, using all seven filters in order to gain a signal to noise on our image. So you can see again the bar and the departure of the spiral arms. Here we perform a one dimensional uh, photometric fit to the galaxy, mainly to show the enhanced residuals. Uh, so you can see here uh, the presence of, of a bars and, and, the, and the spiral arms. We also did some uh, multi-component uh, photometric decomposition. So it's a model having a bar and a broken disk uh, model uh, to have also uh, an initial estimate of the uh, length of this bar. And also when decomposing the images into the Fourier modes, there is this uh, a strong M2 mode, which is usually uh, taken as a as a demonstration or as the, the the presence of a bar. The same peak is shown also when we we did the uh, electricity profile of the of the galaxy. So Sears uh, 2112 at, at redshift three is now the highest uh, redshift bar that I get so far. And the implications uh, for this are, are multiple also because Sears uh, has a mass of uh, two times uh, 10 to the nine solar masses, which is uh, in the range of masses where you expect that the Milky Way will be at this at this redshift. So uh, there is a possibility that we are seeing for the first time uh, Milky Way analog or Milky Way sibling at this redshift, and not only in a stellar mass, but also in morphology. So a galaxy hosting a bar uh, like the Milky Way already at this at this redshift. And in this plot here, this is the position uh, of, uh, of CR2112 in this plot. Here I show you also some of the uh, bars that are present in the TNG, Elusive TNG50 simulation. So this is how, uh, just to, to, to uh, let's say show that uh, in those simulations, there are also bars forming at, uh, at this redshift. So they provide a higher bar fraction, as I saw you before, but uh, there is uh, there are some bars uh, here at, the, at this higher, higher redshift. And, uh, and this will be, uh, let's say, um, a demonstration that uh, this galaxy uh, can be uh, a Milky Way analog at, uh, at this ratio. So as a conclusion uh, for this uh, second part of the talk, uh, we have detected uh, this galaxy, Sears uh, 212, which uh, is a galaxy at redshift point three, at redshift three, sorry, with a stellar mass of about two times 10 to the nine solar masses. The, the fact that we can uh, form or that there is a bar forming in a, in a disk at this redshift somehow also means that uh, the variance in, in this galaxy dominates over the dark matter at this even even at this redshift or at least that the the, the stellar to halo 
uh, mass fraction uh, in the central part of the galaxy is high enough to allow for the formation of, of bars at, at this redshift. And of course, what this is doing is pushing back again uh, the formation of disk to a redshift that could be something like redshift four or five. So this is now more or less in, in agreement with the results uh, on the galaxy morphology that I show you also before. So, but they were uh, in some way uh, uh, morphological results, let's say based only on the morphology of the galaxy, but the, the presence of a bar RH3 implies that dynamically, there should be this uh, stellar disk already called, already mature, a range of four or five in order to start developing the bar that we saw, that we see uh, a range of three. So this is uh, all that I wanted to, to talk to you. Um, thank you very much for, for your time. And of course, if you have any question, uh, go ahead. Thank, thank you, you very much, uh, Iro, thank you very much. A very interesting all what we heard. Uh, let me ask you something. When we say about masses, we speak about the stellar masses, the, 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 the disk masses, right? The, the, the luminous component. Is that correct? The yes, stellar. that's correct. Yeah. So do we have uh, some kind of estimation of the total mass of uh, the galaxies in the uh, large redshifts? When can we start speaking about having something like a rotation curve that we can estimate the dark matter component as well. How uh, yes, the, this is a, a very good question. I think that now there are many proposals uh, on their way to do this. Uh, you see in uh, near spec, uh, mainly aiming at uh, exploring the, the 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 gas, the ionized gas velocity curves. But uh, we could we could do something also also with this going to the stellar uh, maps is, is much difficult uh, even with the James Webb is uh, it's hard to measure good velocity maps beyond redshift two let's say something like this uh, because uh, well it's just a matter of, of signal to noise uh, getting there but uh, with the I nice cast. I think that uh, we will start um, to see now velocity curve that may be analyzed to to do this kind of of works and and, and derive uh, somehow dark matter uh, content for for some of these galaxies. Uh, in this particular case, um, what we have seen is that uh, this galaxy uh, does not have a lot of uh, ionized gas. And we are having problems to detect it in the even in the spec spectra. So for this galaxy, it might be more difficult, but I hope that for other uh, targets or other bar galaxies at uh, redshift two, it will be possible uh, in the in the near in the near future. Yes, it would be very very interesting. And also, I have seen observed that in the okay, not this in this one, but the other early type bars you have shown us uh, the best, uh, uh, well, let me say that like those that are looking much closer to the local universe, but galaxies, they had a companion, is that right? Can, can we see this uh, transparency again? This was in 1.2 to 2 point earlier. Uh, yes, here, here, yeah, you see in the, in, uh, in the two middle panels and to the one to the lower left corner, uh, I think that there is a companion. Is that true? Uh, yes, but uh, yeah, we need to. We don't have uh, a spectroscopy for all of this. So okay. in so this particular case, we have a spectroscopy for uh, for the main galaxy, but not for for the companions like this, this, or this. This is but something I'm also exactly that, where you have now the cursor in two point uh, two point uh, hundred thirty six Z. It is like a local uh, bar. You see the, the spirals. So you can start speaking about locating resonances there. That's very really, very really yeah. It's, uh, it's it's amazing. Yeah, when you look at in detail at these images, this is uh, completely amazing. Like, uh, how galaxies like this 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 look local a local galaxy, right? Yes. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. 
So let me see first if there are some questions here. Or if not, then let me check if uh, if there is someone who is uh, wanting to ask something from. I don't see any questions. Peter there would raise the hand. Okay, so where is Peter? Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, hi, Hyra. This is this is Peter. Um, really hi. nice talk. Um, I had a question about the SMAX study, the SMAX cluster study. Mm -hmm. um, you classified the galaxies into, I guess, sort of disks and ellipticals, basically. Uh, right? Yes. Did you uh, try doing any subclassifications, like like um, S zeros versus spirals? Can you see any spirals? Mm -hmm. We can see the spirals, but we did not uh, separate the serial from spirals. No. Okay. No. What I what I usually do in order to avoid uh, all these problems is to plot um, the bar fraction as a function of the of the disks that we detect and we are sure they are disks, and as a function of the total galaxy population, including the ellipticals. Uh, I think. Having this two bar fraction give you a better idea of uh, of how it changes and how problems on classifying a series as uh, as ellipticals uh, can be affecting uh, your results. So this is, uh, I think, the best that uh, we can do. I I, <clears throat> I was asking because there there have been occasional arguments. I want there was a paper by Ron Buda and A. L. Arakina and collaborators. Suggesting that the bar fraction is lower for S zeros, and then and then the the other point being that that there's the morphology density relation, so that in massive clusters you have a a larger fraction of the disk galaxies which are actually S zeros. Mm -hmm. But yes, again, that's I don't, I don't know whether that's something that you were able to look at for this. No, that's right, and um, this might be uh, pro. You, you can think about this about um, uh, a bias, let's say, in in the field versus uh, versus cluster. But uh, the point is that you have you also have a series in the in the field, right? So, and we are seeing more bars in this uh, if they are a series in this series in, in clusters. So. There should be something in the in in the processes happening in cluster that is affecting the formation of bars. This is interesting because you said in, at the beginning that uh, the the presence the amount of gas uh, at least at least does not uh, influence the bar instability. So bars are formed uh, more. Uh, easily in heavier disks, but uh, the, the, the gas didn't seem to, sp to play a major role. So if we have, however, S zeros uh, with less bars, etc., then this has have to be somehow fit in a, in a, in a scenario with both these uh, indications. Yeah, I think, I think there is a, this, this is a, a difficult uh, problem to answer because the definition of unbar a series and separating them from uh, elliptical is very difficult. So I think that uh, uh, studying just the, the bar fraction on a series, you need to know what the uh, unbar series are uh, and where they are. You know? So and, and this is this is not an easy task uh, using only photometry. So uh, actually, for instance, in a paper that we we did with Alfonso Aguirre in two thousand and nine. We found the opposite. We found more bars in in a series. So, and probably it's just a matter of the definition of these series, uh, not the, the the series with bars, which is uh, which are uh, easy to detect, but the unbar, which are in the denominator of the bar fraction, right? Yeah. So. Can, can I make a quick comment, Pano? Sure, sure. Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah, please, please. Uh, the 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 issue, one of the issues with you know uh, gas content is that the studies that have been done are looking at the, the present day gas content. Yeah. And so, so this doesn't necessarily tell you what the gas content was in the galaxy when the bar formed. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Right. Also, another feature that it is uh, very frequently encountered in uh, and body simulations when you start with several uh, wide range of initial conditions, 
then you see in the, at the very beginning the evolution, the development of an M equal three spiral component. And this dominates for let's say half a year, a year or maybe sometimes more. Uh, I'm wondering if in all these nice images one can trace uh, in the early universe galaxies, some M equal three spirals, even without the bar. So have you encountered something like that? Or at least have it in mind, if you see something, <laughs> it would be <laughs> nice to report that. Yeah, people are yeah, looking around it. for that. So. Great. Yes, okay. <laughs> uh, if there are other questions uh, here. I have to go up and down here. If I don't see a, a raise a hand or just speak, please. Uh, don't see anything then. Cairo, thank you. Thank you very, very much again. It was very interesting. And uh, we hope that uh, we'll meet soon. Uh, yes. So, so, so thank you again for your contribution. Very good. Thank bye you bye. to you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. And meeting for